Hey guys, what's up? We are back here with another video today. And today I'm doing my Wake Forest preview and prediction. So as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below as I will be releasing NCAA predictions all throughout the summer. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below. Like this video if you enjoy it. Comment all your thoughts and opinions down below as always. What do you think Wake Forest's uh, record will be? What do you think of my prediction? Do you think I'm right, wrong, or just on the dot? Um... So what do you think? That is the main thing. Uh, but as we continue on, make sure that you are subscribed and hit that notification bell. Um, so that way you'll never miss another video. So let's get into Wake Forest schedule preview and prediction. So Wake Forest starts off with a pretty easy game against uh, BMI or the Virgin Virginia Military Institute. Uh, so that is a quick one there. There's not much to say on that game other than you should have an easy W there. Um, as you head into week two and surprising your homecoming game against our, no, I'm sorry, week two against Vanderbilt as this game will be at Nashville in Vanderbilt's home space. So let's get into the real season talk because you're one to know with Sam Hartman coming back because quarterback and AT Perry up wide receiver. You have a dynamic offense that really shows some potential. And Dave Clawson is a coach that really could show potential as he continues on with this Wake Forest team. And this is the reason why these next couple of games are going to be imperative to defining your season with games against Liberty, Clemson, and Florida State coming up right after, a, I believe, a win against Vanderbilt. I think that you'll beat the Commodores just because I think even though Clark Lee is the right hire for Vanderbilt, the problem is, is that there's not much he can do there other than hope that he can improve the situation a little bit and work from there. So I have them winning that game. Then you have a, your next home game uh, against the Liberty Flames. I have this as a win. I think that this is a game in which without, if Malik Willis was at Liberty, then this is maybe a win for the Flames. But with no Malik Willis at Liberty, I doubt um, that you're going to see a guy come in right away um, and be able to just be the same type of quarterback that Malik Willis was. And Sam Hartman in and of itself is a great quarterback with the dynamic offense that I talked about earlier that you could see because to be honest, the ACC is turning into the big 12 conference of old, obviously with Brett Venables and Dave Aranda kind of leading the big 12 conference. Now it's going to be a little bit more of a defensive conference. And even with Mike Gundy, he's an offensive guy, but he's his defense is what is keeping him in games. So heading into the week three, I think you get a win. I think this is a big game, but the bigger game comes the following week against the Clemson Tigers. The Tigers are going to be an interesting opponent for the big reason and the main reason being this. Clemson has beaten you down time and time again. Even with DJ at quarterback last year where he really struggled most of all season. So the problem with this matchup is that Clemson has dominated you, and Davo has dominated Dave Clawson. But here's the problem that I see. With Wake Forest having guys like Sam Hartman and A.T. Perry, I don't think that Clemson has the ability to cover on the outside as much as they do to the run game. Run game is not Wake Forest's specialty, but here is the key in this game. Can Wake Forest protect Sam Hartman as he kind of stands only a foot or two away from those defensive tackles those defensive tackles being like Miles Murphy and um, uh, Miles Murphy and I cannot remember the other guy uh, Brian Bercy, uh, Brian Bercy and Miles Murphy. That's going to be hard to do with Sam Hartman's kind of signature drop back being less of a drop back and more of just standing still. It is going to be interesting. Can he turn that into actually something that is productive and that works in this Clemson game? Because the biggest thing with him. It's not hitting the shots downfield. They can hit the shots. It's whether or not you are able to protect Sam Hartman on a consistent base up basis and not give up six, seven sacks where you're getting... The good thing with Sam Hartman's drop back is that you're only losing three, four yards rather than seven, eight yards. So you don't lose an entire down, 
Um, like with a seven, eight yard loss, you're going to need a whole nother down to make that up. Um, but with three, four yard loss, you can make that up a little bit easier. But if you are going to win this game, you have to strike to your advantages. And I think that's exactly what Wake Forest does as I think they beat the Clemson Tigers. And that is an also a big key as I think the ACC Atlantic division will come down to three teams. That's Clemson, Wake Forest, and NC State. And the big matchup of the of the year, I think, will be against NC State coming later on in November when they have to play. Um, as long as you're able to beat Clemson, you have to beat one of the two. If you want any shot at playing, you have to beat one of the two. Then you have a road game at Florida State, and this is where I think you trip up. You just beat the monster. You beat the big, bad Clemson Tigers. And this is where I think you trip up. I think you trip up at Florida State. This is a game at the Doak. It's a hard stadium. It's a hard environment to play in. Mike Norvell is playing for his life, and he needs a win, and I think that this is where he gets it. Even even though I think Wake Forest is the better team, I think this is a win that Mike Norvell can get, and I think he will get. And to be completely honest, I think you lose either the Clemson game or the Florida State game. So maybe they lose to Clemson but beat Florida State. I think one of those happens. Uh, and that's just kind of what I think. Same with for Clemson. I think they lose to either NC State or Wake Forest. And with this game being at Wake Forest and the game against NC State being at Clemson, I think Clemson wins that NC State game and Wake Forest wins the Wake for the home Wake Forest game. So then you played the Army back next, and this is not an easy game. This is not a bad Army team. This is a team that you're gonna have to grind it out with. If I remember correctly, I think Wake Forest played them last year and it was like a cabillion to a trillion. And I, I'm not kidding. I think it was like 70 to like 60 something. It was an incredible score fest. Uh, but the point being is this. If Wake Forest truly wants to develop an offensive setting in this game, they have to also have the defensive capabilities. Offensively, they can win. But if they really want to end Army's chance of having an upset, they have to be able to stop them on the defensive. They have to be able to get three, four stops here and there. Get those stops and get keep your offense in the game where if they don't make it, if they don't get a touchdown once, that's not the end of the world. That seems to be the end of the world for this game last year. You didn't get a touchdown. Oh, boy, they're going to get a touchdown. How are we going to get back in the game? Stuff like that. Then you have a bye week as you come back home to play Boston College. I have this as a win. I don't think Boston College is as good as most people think they are. I think Halfley is a good head coach-ish, but I don't think he's a great head coach, and I don't think he's as good as a head coach as Dave Clawson is, so I think you get a win against the Eagles. Then you head to Louisville. This is a big matchup against the Scott Satterfield, same as Mike Norvell, who's on a semi-hot seat. Uh, there isn't anybody specific to replace Scott Satterfield the same way that there is with Mike Norvell with um, Deion Sanders, but I think that it is important that you get a win here, and I think that you are as you continue on a pretty substantial run starting off the season 7-1. and one. But this is where I think you trip up. You head to Raleigh, North Carolina to play the Wolfpack, and I think that this is where you fall short again. I think that you get a loss here, uh, mostly because I think that Devin Leary in that offense is just as good as Wake Forest. And to be honest, again, I think that this is a series in which, because the game is at North Carolina State, I'm going to give the win to North Carolina State just because I think that they have the advantage in this game a little bit, but it's more just kind of it's at North Carolina State. That is the biggest factor there. Then you have a home game against the Tar Heels, and even though the Tar Heels lost their quarterback in Sam Howe, don't get it wrong. Mac Brown is out for revenge, and I think this is one of the games where it gets it. Like I, Even though I said all I said about it being a home game for NC State, I think those two teams are evenly matched. I think you have another big he uh, game here where you lose uh, to North Carolina. And unfortunately, I think you lose both of your top two North Carolina games. Though I do think you'll get a win here at the end of the season against the Duke Blue Devils. But before I get too close into it, uh, you have one more game against the Syracuse Orange. I think that this is a win. No matter what anybody says, Syracuse is not a very good football team. And I think that they will not continue any success. 
Um, though I do think that Sean Tucker is a great running back, I don't think Dino Babers is a great coach, and they really haven't had any success out of when Eric Dungey was quarterback. Then, finally, you have one final game at Duke in Durham, North Carolina. I think that this is a win. I think that you end the season with a ten, uh, sorry, 9-3 and three record, and I think that is enough to get you to the ACC championship game with a 9-3 and three record. The only problem is that those three losses are all against ACC opponents. That is something that's going to be a little bit more difficult to make up. So that pretty much wraps up today's videos. Hit the two videos down below. Uh, or the playlist will be over here. And then make sure you hit the subscribe button. And as always, have a great day. Bye.